Hello, investing friends, friends of financial freedom. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a really great show for you. Got a huge show for you. Cassava Sciences reported its Q1, including a, an enrollment update and an update on the CMS randomized trial that we're waiting to uh, hear from. Got a big update from them. We also have some intellectual property update from them. They have so Cassava Sciences is doing uh, Sumifilam as a drug to treat Alzheimer's. Looks like the first real exciting drug for Alzheimer's disease. And then, but there's a big problem with Alzheimer's, it's hard to diagnose. So even if you got a good drug, how do you get it to the people in time for a progressive disease like that? You need a good blood-based treatment. They've got a intellectual property, uh, an international intellectual property filing, PCT filing for Savadex, which is a blood-based biomarker test for uh, Alzheimer's disease. We'll check that out as well. And TGTX, TG Therapeutics, on March 31st, we called it the highest probability multi-bag in biotech and here we are 31 days later it is up like 98 percent it got up to i got it behind it at 1504 it got up to 2974 so at 30 dollars and eight cents so we're less than 30 cents were we 34 cents 34 cents we're 34 cents from a double 31 days later tg therapeutics this is the idea that uh What's working is no, there's no speculation. There's no optimism. There's no leeway being granted by the market. Nobody's saying it looks like your drug's going to be great. Only thing they care about, oh, the sales are coming in and it is great. That's all they care about. So we got behind TGTX at the perfect moment. They were approved and shown to be the best, but still the market wouldn't react. And it looks like same thing with McRib series. People are asking me, why is that not up? It's like the only one's not up. Uh, well, it's they got approved. Now it looks like it could be in the same spot. If you believe in that one, that could be in the same spot. Anyway, we got behind TG Therapeutics right, be, right before we started reporting numbers and the sales numbers started coming in great. And so it looks like we think it's going to be an octuple and it's already on its way almost to a double. We also got IC was bought out. So another buyout. So there's big buyouts. Now this one went up a lot and then was bought out for not much more, but another another buyout. And then uh, can sale our insurance play from last week is up a pretty good bit for a for a little uh, an excess and surplus insurance play. We'll, we'll talk a little more color on 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 Kinsale as well. Not an investment advisor, not investment advice. Number one rank stock analyst in the world, and what we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us, controlled by the hedge funds and the special interests, and they don't have our best interest in mind. But that is okay because we have each other. We have Investors Club, and we're going to do a way better job than the bozos in the financial media ever could. Anyway, if you like that, please hit like. The algorithm likes like, and you are going to like liking like. Novem non agil gentillionaire. I didn't even know that was a number. Holy moly, you must have a lot of money because you have twice as much now in TGTX. Heck yes, my friend. You got to tell me how many commas were in that number. All right, TGTX is up 17.88% as we speak. There's Iovance, our latest pick we, we talked about last week, up almost 8%, above six bucks. DBVT, the peanut allergy play, up over 6%. Sport Trader, the. Uh, uh, they, if you want to start a sports book online, they give you the back end. They're up more than 6%. Galactin up more than 4%. There's rain up almost 4%. Well, then climb is recovery is climbing back up more than 3.5%. There is cassava up more than 3%. And Kinsale is up more than 3% as well. I just sent a, a, a missive out about Kinsale to the Dividends Club uh, subscribers. Really great stock. We'll take another look at that one. Let's go with Cassava is up more than 3%. Reporting tomorrow at or presenting tomorrow, H.C. Wainwright is CEO Remy Barbier. We had said we expected uh, that they would uh, give us an updated May presentation, and we got uh, we got an updated quarterly report with updated numbers. And I guess we might have gotten a presentation as well. We in the Q1 filing, there is some uh, presentation stuff. Uh, All right, here is the presser. So Kava, Cassava Sciences Q1. So over 1,244 Alzheimer's patients now enrolled in phase three. Remember, originally they were going to do 1,750. They have two. The gold standard uh, in drug testing is two large randomized trials. They've got two large uh, randomized trials. One's a year long with 750 people. One is 18 months 
with a thousand people. And then these grew a little bit. So the one, the, the thousand one's like 1100 now, the other one might have grown like over 800. So it's 1750 or 18 something or 1900, something like that. Anyway, they got 1244. They're still expecting to be done Q4 2023. We had heard speculation that maybe that could be done earlier. Remember, they looks like they're filling these equally. So they could have said, you know what, let's fill our smaller, shorter one first, because when we come back with all this other data and a randomized trial, they've got to let us on with breakthrough therapy or one of these designations. They got us let us on market, but they didn't do that. They did half and half. Uh, maybe they thought if they filled the one up too fast, they couldn't complete the other because there'd be too much time remaining when the drug is on the market. You can't, couldn't pick people at a placebo. Anyway, uh, so they're saying Q4, which they've always been saying. People have been speculating earlier in the Investors Club Discord. People are still speculating maybe September to fill up that shorter one. Maybe so, but September and then October's Q4, but something like that, end of the year. And then that puts the real deal. If, if CMS doesn't push us over the line for approval, which I'm not expecting, but you never know. If it follows in uh, Amelix's footsteps for AM ALS, which is a near fatal neurological disease, and we got great... Uh, we got great speak about that from the FDA about these fatal neurological diseases don't have good drugs. So may maybe they could be approved on CMS. If not, end of 2024 is when we can get that first phase three back. That'd be big stuff. 187 million in cash and cash equivalents. Will they need money? They net loss of 24 million in the quarter. So they're burning about 100 million a quarter. Not, it should not really go up from there, but it probably will stay around there, I guess. So 100 million a year or so. They've, uh, they're, they're getting in the neighborhood of possibly needing money. It looks like they can get to the end of that first one. So sooner or later, they may need some cash. However, they do have uh, Sanford Robertson in their back pocket. He could possibly pro provide some, if things are looking good, he's such a, a large equity holder. He could, there's his firm could possibly provide some debt financing. I'm speculating, but there was some sort of a, uh, arrangement brokered between them and I believe Wells Fargo helped broker some, some sort of a meeting between Cassava and Sanford's firm, something Francisco Partners, like a year ago, something like that. Who knows? Who knows? Speculation. Uh, from their Q, uh, their 10Q, their Q1 10Q, there's some speak about the CMS. Remember the, the, there was the year-long open label 12-month uh, study with 216 people that went really well. The responders from that got, went into a, an, another year, six months of uh, people, half the people randomized to stay on the drug, six months, half the people to go to placebo, and then six more months of everybody back on the drug. But the most interesting part is the six months where it's half on, half off, and then we're going to have some randomized. We already have one month randomized, but here we'll have six month randomized, and it's with responders. So the date that's been enriched, which is explicitly... Uh, endorsed by the FDA, and it looks like this exact study design was either designed by the FDA or, or explicitly endorsed because they came out of a meeting with Dr. Robert Temple, the head of uh, special programs at the FDA, with this study. So an update on this big study that should be completing around June 15th, and we should hear data in Q3. Update on this one. It's a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study of smithlam in patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's. Study patients are randomized one-to-one -one smithlam placebo for six months. To enroll in this study, patients must have previously completed 12 months or more of open-label treatment with smithlam. Patient enrollment for this study is closed as of April 26, 2023, over 125 patients. So that's good. They were aiming for 125. They got already more then 125 patients are done. So they're just waiting on some laggards now, it seems. A small number of enrolled patients are still being treated in the randomized portion of this study. All randomized clinical data remain blinded. They, they don't know what this data is like. It's blinded, even the doctors are blinded. This is double blind. Our goal is to announce top line clinical results for CMX approximately third quarter. So hopefully that'll be really good. And then here is Savadex. Uh, this is international application published under the Patent Cooperation Treaty. So we were talking in the Investors Club Discord. Where is this Patent Cooperation Treaty stuff? 12 to 14 month process where you begin the process of patenting your stuff internationally. This was originally filed. It's got an, it's, it's originally filed July 22nd, 2022. Uh, retroactive, it seems. Priority date to July 23rd, 2021 and published March 30th, 2023. Uh, in the Investors Club Discord, Hans says, 
looks the principle of this test is digesting filament A from Alzheimer's patients with various enzymes and then determining the ratio of specific phosphorylated filament A fragments. That's good news for Brodkin et al. as they worried in their masterpiece, Savadex exposed that the test is not patented. Uh, <laughs> so Jesse Brodkin, uh, short bear type, uh, saying there's no, there's no patent for Savadex. Now they had said that, they said it's patented by trade secrets et al. Now we had also said that the best thing could be fine, just give it away to everybody. If you got the good drug, give this test away so we know every, who has Alzheimer's disease and then treat them with the drug. That wouldn't be so bad. But anyway, they've got, now they've got at least some start. They also had trade secrets, et cetera, but this is the start of some, something of a patenting process. Uh, that was Hans. And I think this was Vinny. Okay, we got another thing from Vinny. My apologies, I, I cut off who this is from. I think it was from Vinny, it might've been, I forget who this is from, my, my apologies. We, we had some really good comments in there. Uh, it's under PCT, which means Patent Cooperation Treaty, which means that it's essentially filed a placeholder for the idea I think in about 140 countries. Oh, this is QS Cowboy. Thank you, my friend, QS Cowboy. I did that and end up using none except Mexico and Canada because maintenance fees need to be paid to hold all those places and it was bleeding me dry. But Sav has much deeper pockets than I. And then, and then uh, Vinny came back with more about with more color on that. And I think P. Cigar maybe did, uh, had this awesome uh, graphic. So, so PTC, it's sort of a blanket umbrella way to file like 140 countries, to begin filing 140 countries. They, sh they show the process here, really great. Uh, Vinny says, and their, so their priority was filed in 2021, as we just saw uh, with Wang and Thornton. I don't think they can get biomarker patent, but they applied as a method. Uh, okay, it looks like, as you pointed out in the claim 25, they've updated to use mass spectrometry. We know this is like the third or fourth iteration of Savadex, they, they've tried, they've gotten, they, they got money from the National Institute of Health, National Institute on Aging before they got on for this, before they got it for somethylam. So they've been, they've been at this for a while. They've switched now to mass spectrum. It always seemed based on filament A, but what's the best way to test this filament A? Now they've gotten around to mass spectrometry instead of an antibody, as they, they were saying. What I like about this is their belief in filament A tied to the mechanism of action. That makes me truly believe their trust, the research, and absolutely they are real. Uh, I mean, of course, if we needed any more, absolutely, my friend. <clears throat> okay, so great stuff there. And then we have TG Therapeutics up 16.3% as we speak. Remember, we called this the highest probability multibag in biotech. So March 31st, I sent out highest probability multibag in biotech is an octuple. That was right, no, it was right over here. Let me uh, stretch this out some more. That was right meow, right meow. Got to go even lower, got to go even lower. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, right there, it went up immediately on our first Symphony Health report, another Symphony Health report, and now we got the real report, doo -doo -doo, all the way up to here, uh, now we got the real report, and it, it was one of the, a bunch of interesting things, one is they actually talked about Symphony Health, remember we, remember we been saying, uh, we gotta wait till the quarterly report to get the real numbers, uh, like Transmedics, I don't think Symphony Health reports those for the uh, organ care system, but uh, with, with they've, been, they've been coming in for like SC Pharma and for, and for TGTX and others, but it's like, can you trust these? Somebody actually asked that on the call and in the Investors Club Discord, TVL9000 said, interesting, they mentioned Symphony. I listened to the call, but I was doing some other stuff and I missed this. Interesting, they mentioned Symphony. L likely plays to SCPH2, but they cautioned to use severe caution with those reported numbers. It doesn't track well early on, and they wouldn't compare for a few quarters in. They also have a direct, I, I, now I remember hearing them say that, I think they might've said, we, we need to see another quarter before we really comment on that or something like that. It doesn't track well early on, and they wouldn't compare for a few quarters in. They also have a direct distribution program that is not captured in the Symphony data. So it looks like there's some value to it, but there's some things that's just missing. And that was what we heard not confirmed, but supposedly from SC Pharma's investment relations, investor relations team, is that the, they're not, they, they, they cautioned against people looking at that data. They don't know where it's coming from and they, would, they said something about being cautious with it. Uh, and then why did we like TGT? So here's uh, 
TGTX, they just reported, remember this is relapsing, relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. Uh, there were comments here from the CEO. It's gratifying to see that the pre-launch enthusiasm for Bryumbi is translating into the commercial setting and the feedback we have heard from both healthcare providers and patients has been highly encouraging. Overall, I believe our team is doing a fantastic job and I'm pleased to share that in our first partial quarter, essentially two months of commercial availability, we generated approximately 8 million in net sales. The early launch of Bramley has exceeded our internal expectations and we believe the momentum will continue to build throughout the year. Remember, we've got this as an octuple. Why is that? Well, remember the first things first, like we said, it's on the market. That's what the market likes now. No speculation, no optimism. Are you getting sales? That's one thing. And then this is the best. It's the best on efficacy. It's the best on safety. It's the best on dosing schedule. It's the best on pricing. Uh, so here, here's, here's, uh, how often patients relapse. It's the only one of, uh, of all the competitors to get a uh, single digit percentage re relapse rates in both its phase threes, uh, lesions as well. It did exceedingly well in reducing lesions and then safety. There's no cancer mentioned on its label. Like one of the competitors, there's no, uh, f fatal in fatal reaction no, no uh, black box warning like another competitor. And then uh, the, the, other, the other real competitor is a is uh, just sort of not a competitor, just a different thing. It's the subcutaneous you want to take at home. Well, this is you go to a clinic twice a year and it's cheaper. Uh, for people that don't want to do that for some reason and you have to do it at home, self-administration a, a, a lot more times and it's not as effective. It's just, it's just not as good and it's more expensive. Anyway, it's just the best one and the safest and the best dosing schedule and the cheapest. And so it looked like to us that we could, uh, that they, so that they were going to get, maybe they could get 60,000 patients annually at 59,000 bucks comes to three and a half billion with a four and a half billion, uh, multiple that comes to 16 billion in oct octuple, but they can probably do better. Uh, their competition is, is doing better in, in a number of things. So anyway, 12, it's a biologic with 12 years of exclusivity. We went through this one. I'm not going to read it all. But uh, and they're, they, they're marketing themselves. And it looks like they can. So that, that's why we liked it in the first place. And then since we did the biotech boot camp, the first thing, the first report we had, remember, if you sign up for the Investors Club Small Caps newsletter, you get two small caps recommended a month. I send you the report. And then a week later, we talk about them on the show. The first thing we did after the biotech boot camp was TGTX, calling it the highest probability multi bag, and it immediately has basically doubled for us in a month. Then we said series. Uh, was going to follow in its footsteps. Series just got approved. It's got to hit the market now. It went down on approval, but so did TGTX actually eventually. So did SCPH before the sales numbers came in. Anyway, we call that approval correct. We still like that one. And then we also said Iovance. Iovance is up over six bucks here. And, and we really like that, that one as well. Anyway, uh, so the, since the boot camp, we've, the, the, so we're doing the biotech boot camp. It's everything there is to know for to, uh, to analyze biotech stocks. And no, no, no joke. Everything. And if you don't agree, you get your money back. Uh, so sign up for the boot camp. We're doing it this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Sign up in the description and come and join us. So you'll know everything. You get the great, uh, you get the great uh, biotech boot camp book, which Mr. Barbier himself emailed me. I included him on this, hoping he would show up. He didn't. That's fine. But he emailed me himself uh, weeks later, telling me he did. Uh, he went, meant to tell me how much, how impressed, or how I think he might have said it was outstanding. The the book was, uh, it really is. And and then you get the you get the video of the class, so you have it forever. Plus you get the Discord, so you can discuss it and ask questions forever. And you get that expertise forever. Sign up. What else do we got? We got I see I see a Stellis. Uh, buys out Iverix. We have a Japanese Astellis buying out uh, for 5.9 billion Iveric in eye disease. Iveric in emerging eye disease. Iveric is less than three months away from learning whether. So they okay. See, so this is interesting because this is they're about to get approved. This is, we've seen we've seen that it's a pretty good approval year. Uh, we are we've got a perfect record calling approvals. Uh, we we got what Oramed corrected that it was not approved and. SC and, and series corrected they were, but anyway, they they looks like they're uh, th this is three months from approval, and so they're gonna they're taking to take them out, uh, gonna take them out before approval. However, they only got like a bit of a premium. They got a twenty two percent premium on the close, but uh, from a month ago, it's up. It's a sixty four percent premium. So there was I guess there was speculation they were gonna get bought out, but interesting interesting that the buyouts are still coming, and then Kinsale. 
Uh, so sign up for the newsletter. And sign, so anyway, got a new. Uh, so I'm gonna do. So sign up for the boot camp. Sign up for the boot camp this weekend. Also, it's May, so that means two more picks. Uh, I've been sitting on some picks, so I'm gonna send one out uh, this Friday before the boot camp. I'm gonna send one on Friday. Sign up for the newsletter to get the new pick. Now let's do Kinsale. Kinsale is the excess and surplus insurer. It's up three percent today. Uh, it's probably it'll make a new all-time high here. One of these, it just put one in a few days ago, but it'll make another new one. I'm I'm guessing. So a few things here. Kin Sales got a price to earnings ratio of 49. A price to earnings ratio of 40. You can't buy a stock, a, a dividend stock with a price to earnings ratio of 49. And so I want to just point out uh, the free cash flows. So uh, do you have to reinvest in your business? Uh, what, what's your capital expenditures? Things like that. How much? Free cash flow is what's left for you, what, what you, what you don't have to sink back into the business to keep it going. And so, uh, so that, that's, so when you talk about reported earnings and taxes, you get it's your net income. But really, what do you get to keep for buybacks and dividends? What, what do the shareholders get to keep? It's free cash flow. So if you, if you look at the free cash flows, going back to September of 2020 quarterly, it was 290, 308, 397, 450, 463, 458, 533, 682, 769, 432, 847. And so a little bit lumpy, but going from the twos to the eights and quarterly since September 2020. And then, but now wait a minute, 847, if you multiply 847 times four, that comes at 3388, $33.88 in free cash flow a share. Well, this thing is trading for less than $338. That means it's trading for less than 10 times cash. Now you had to annualize the latest quarter and they're lumpy, so maybe that's a little bit generous. But still, compared to the 49 times earnings, oh wait, it's 49 times earnings, but it's only 10 times cash flows? So these, uh, that's why you look at the free cash flows. Uh, and then you can, get, you can get better and look at the earnings, the owner's earnings, uh, where you take into account working capital and things. But anyway, uh, that, that is a huge, there, there's a huge example of, of why the price to earnings ratio is misleading and why some of these great, great stocks that just go up forever, they never seemingly give you a chance to buy in if you only look at the PEs. Uh, and then I had said, look at the growth of the operating earnings last week and, and noted it was in the 30%. And I would used that to project uh, the growth of the stock going forward. Not that, that, that was a mistake on my part. I should have said return on equity. So equity is, uh, is if you equity is the stock. So if you if if you buy the stock, what's your return? And then so there's return on equity, and there's also return on assets. But uh, there's companies uh, if you do return on assets, that does not a debt is not an asset. So what if you borrow money and put that to work? Well, the return on assets doesn't do that. So return on equity it takes that into account. Anyway, so here's the return on equity for Kinsale. If it's in the double digits, that's good. Uh, so going back into the last five years, it's it's like 11, 12 percent. It keeps going up to like 15 to like 18, uh, 15 ish over 20, getting up to close to 25. It's like at an all time high now as they get. And then here's the equity. They just keep on making more cash. So they just keep having shareholders equity. That's what's yours. It just keeps on growing, growing. So the so here's the returns on return on equity is like 24 percent. And if it just stays at 24 percent. And their multiple stays the same. So their PE is 49 or their price to cash flow is 10, whatever it is, as long as they're not valued uh, more speculatively with FOMO or, or less uh, or more, with more fear. So less speculatively, as long as they're valued at the same amount of greed or fear, uh, then it will, you know, the same amount of speculation, same multiple, as long as they're the same multiple then you, the return you'll get is the return on equity. So as long as they can keep that 24% return on equity, you can expect a 24% rate of return. That's incredibly great, incredibly great. But it should be better than that. So anyway, uh, the, because of the 2022 hurricane season, P&C, property and casualty, there's a lot of property and casualty insurers that are out of the business and they're taking their excess and surplus lines with them. So Kinsale sees not only a hard market, where they can charge good prices and have tough underwriting standards, but also a lot of opportunity to expand. So these returns, are, they just sounded like they're gonna get better. So anyway, I really like Kinsale. That's one of the Dividends Club stocks, sign up for that. Okay, big old show. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones, TGTX, you betcha, buddy. Great to see you, my friend, and uh, please tell me how many commas are in that number. 06 Road King, 
Good morning, Joe. Thank you for all the research you do and info you bring us. My pleasure, my friend. Thank you for being here. Really glad to, really glad you're, you're uh, appreciating it, my friend. Good start to the day for Iowa. Thanks for the tip. Nelson, you are very welcome, my friend. Up more than 6%. As TGTX is up more than 15%. Sava holding on to one and a half percent. Really good day. I didn't even look at the broader market. Broader market, S&P is exactly flat and NASDAQ is down 0.31. But the good guys are having a good day. Great to see you, Nelson. GPRPR, Sava will wait for the full enrollment to complete the start trial or trials are going on parallelly with uh, the enrolled patients Oh, they're going on in parallel. They're in, they're filling them in parallel, and as soon as as soon as as soon as you get a, a patient, you start. You don't wait for everybody and then start all at once. Yeah, so they've been enrolling people in both and, and getting them going. And it seemed like fifty percent, fifty fifty as far as how many in each. How long after AMLX CMS data readout were they approved? There was an advisory committee. Great question, because the advisory committee met twice. And there was more data, but it wasn't all that. The, the data that they added was not all that much more compelling. I'm not, I, I think they might have had that CMS. I think they the randomized withdrawal trial. I think they might have had that trial on, on the first advisory committee. The advisory committee said it was in, in part the loudness of the patient advocates that made them change their mind, which is why over the weekend, Jay Mills had a great idea uh, he, he made a something you can scan with your phone to go to that. Uh, so then on your phone, you go to that um, uh, uh, petition we have to get to get to get some lamb to market. You scan. So you put it up in an old folks home, scan it. And then, and, you know, somebody comes to visit, whatever, scan it right there. You can. So we've gotten that thing. had really hit the brakes. We've gotten like at least 10 since then. Jay, awesome idea. So great question. I don't, I don't frankly, a matter of months, I think. I don't, frankly, I don't know. Good question. MT, Morning Joe found a new tidbit over the weekend. SG America's Securities LLC raised its position in shares of Cassava by 600% during the fourth quarter. Awesome. We, we need some institutional ownership. See the news on Pliant. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, meaning idiopathic, meaning coming out of nowhere, I think. Clinically significant data announced today. Took a nosedive. Oh, interesting. I will take a look at it. Thanks, Joe. Great news. Great Sava news. Tim, great to see you. Yeah, great. We, we need some great Sava news. And we'll get more from Mr. Barbier tomorrow, and that, that'll be really nice to see. Separately in Q2, we expect to announce new evidential data for the biological activity of smithlam on filament A protein. I didn't catch that. Thank you, Hans. Separately in Q2, we expect to announce new evidential data for the biological activity of smith Excellent. So, I mean, as if we needed it, because how often on this show have we said, look, even more mechanism of action. Filament A is so involved with the brain and biological activity all over the body, but the brain, the cholinergic system, uh, and, and all, all those things, and, and as, if, as if they even need to provide their own, but they're going to. And I think it'll be from an independent, maybe an independent party that might have said that. Thank you, Hans. Stock guru gal, did you know PRTC, Pure Tech, has a galactin inhibitor? Looks like they might be going after head and neck cancer. In this phase two, they are doing a number of cancers, different drug than galactin and BIXT. Very interesting. Thank you very much. I'll check it out. Bob, remember to smash the like button. Literally take a hammer and smash anyone that gets in your way when you gently press that like button. Thank you, Bob. Boot camp, boot camp. We'll see you this Saturday and Sunday for the boot camp. It's going to be awesome. We've already did it once, and it was terrific. And we're going to do it again, uh, slightly better. But just uh, and and the the I've got I ordered six batteries, <laughs> uh, so I don't I'm not going to plug anything in. So there's nothing. The batteries can't go out. So no 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 silly tech issues either. Thanks for the TGTX Joyce in the Investors Club Discord this morning stepped up and said, "Oh, in the pre market, I'm buying at twenty three fifty Joyce." What did you just make? Like a 25% gain just in like a, an hour, in two hours? 25% gain in an hour, Joyce? I can see why you're saying thank you. You're very welcome. Well done, my friend. Chirag, Joyce went to the Joyce went to the boot camp. Joyce went to the biotech boot camp, and there she is making a 25% gain in one hour. Sign up for the boot camp. Pays for itself right away. Joyce, tell them. Chirag, any update on SCPH script numbers? How you feeling about SCPH? Love it. 
rarely look rarely looking forward to the uh, quarterly report. What do we say? May 9th, I think. When they're going to announce their numbers. And very interested to see uh, if Symphony Health is right or wrong. It doesn't really matter if Symphony Health is right or wrong. It, are they growing? And is the market doing what we think it's going to do? TGTX, it looked like the market was going to want it and the market wanted it. SCPH, it's screaming that the market wants it. And I think they're, they're going to. So I think they're going to report good news. So I'm looking forward to it. Bioinvestor, where do you sign up for the biotech course? When is the class for those who can't attend this weekend? If you can't attend this weekend, first of all, you're invited back for life. If we, We'll do it probably maybe at least once a year, I guess, something like that. People wanted to do it in, in person. That'd be really cool. We'll see. I used to teach classes in person. That'd be really cool. Uh, but in the in the description, you can sign up uh, Saturday and Sunday, and then you'll have the videos and the book and the Discord for live just ongoing everyday discussions uh, from then on. So you can you, you can just have the videos at your disposal, all and the book at your disposal, and the uh, chat at your disposal all the time. McRib is a buy at this point, Bob. I think so. Tom says, Tom Lou, JC, good morning. Hi, Joe. Great news on Saba. Hopefully we'll get more news in the week or two with the lawsuits. Uh, in the Investors Club Discord, somebody had mentioned there's some language in there that they think that, that the something, I think it was something about they think their spend is going to go down. And it, was, it seemed perhaps like speculation that they thought their legal bills were going to go down. And it seemed like speculation that they were about to win this case speculation but it, it that's uh the, i think you're right i think you're right anyway with the lawsuits but i think they might they might have possibly alluded to it in this latest round of updates could you provide a quick update on ikt i'm ready to buy some shares is now good how's your long-term outlook on ikt I, nobody mentioned anything but last week we talked about ikt has shown clinically now only like one in seven things goes from mice to people they showed really good evidence that C, so C able in cells and everything in theory should be a good path to uh, help with Parkinson's disease. So the, these kinases, uh, they use phos, pho, they, they phosphorylate things to activate and inactivate other things inside the cell. So they, they can, they're, 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 there's just a lot, kinases are just very active in, in a lot of things. And so, okay, so they're going to try one here with, with C able, which can, has sort of turns the cell on or off or tells the cell to shut down when bad things start happening. So let, let's go into there and do that. Worked really well in mice. Is it going to work if people don't know? And now they reported, I think this was the first time they reported it. And there was like no fanfare. And I said, did I miss this? Is this the first time they're reporting it? And nobody said anything. Uh, they, in people, the results, according to those this uh, uh, Parkinson's scales, like two, two different Parkinson's scales, the, th the different readouts were excellent. It was working in people. So, I don't know. It sounds pretty darn good. I mean, it sounds like really darn good. Considering IKT, Parkinson's is like one-sixth the size of Alzheimer's. And IKT's market cap is what? 15 million? If they have, if this is working in, uh, in Parkinson's, 1.5 billion is not enough. You know, a 100x from here, that's not enough. Now, they're, gonna, they're early. They will need money. But uh, it seems like they got something. I mean, that's, uh, frankly, if that's, fr I'm, I'm frankly surprised it didn't, uh, I would have thought that that's, maybe the market doesn't know about that yet. Maybe when the market finds out about that. So the answer is yes. I do think this is a great time to buy. Uh, McRib earnings due tomorrow. Any thoughts? Um, not really. I mean, with the, I, I can't see how they're going to say that no news is good news. We got what we wanted. They're approved. And now we just want to come in with good sales numbers. So I, I, don't, I don't know what they could say that's good at this point, except for a, a huge update that they got bought out. I'm not really sure what they, I mean, there's, we don't need that. They got what they wanted. And, and now we know it's going to be about, you know, four more weeks or five more weeks. It'll be June, they said that they'll be on the market. So we got about a month until we, uh, until they start selling. So no news is good news. Just no blow ups. Manufacturing's going well. Just no blow ups. There's, there's not really good news they can report without it being like really, really big news. I don't, not, I don't think. What is IKT working on? Mold? More advanced? <laughs> uh, they're working on a couple of programs. They've got Parkinson's disease program. 
They've also got, what is it, leukemia? Uh, they've got 001 Pro, which is there's a drug already for leukemia, but people don't take it because it upsets their stomach. So this is a pro drug and uh, it doesn't break down into the active drug until it's already been digested. So it solves some of those problems and they think they can get some good market share. So I like that program as well. So we have three, three interviews with uh, Dr. Milton Werner on this show. So that was really big news. I mean, I, I can't believe it, frankly, that that wasn't, uh, that there wasn't more fanfare about that. I think maybe the company didn't make more fanfare about it. They had said earlier that they weren't really going to speculate. They were going to just put data out there and let others run with it. But nobody ran with it, it seems. <laughs> so I don't know. All right. Great to see you guys. I hate to hang up the phone with this many people here, but great to see you guys. We'll have a great week. I got so much to do, but I still got to go. Uh, we'll sign up, uh, sign up for the, the newsletter because we got another report coming before Saturday. We'll do, we'll do it on Friday night. Sign up for the boot camp and join us this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And there's no, does IKT focus on mild, more advanced, mold? Oh, I don't think they've, frankly, uh, they, they never, they, I don't think they ever said specified advanced. So I'll, I'll say mild, frankly. Frankly, off the top of my head, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think they ever, not advanced, so not advanced. All right, great to see you guys. We'll do it again tomorrow, and I'll see you in the Investors Club Discord. Sign up for the newsletter, and you get the Discord. Sign up for the bootcamp. You get the Discord. See you in the Discord.